question line. First of all, giving you a brief about this chapter. In this chapter, guys, you'll be learning only two types. One will be the problem based on transmission line. That will be a numeric pro problem. Second will be a problem based on smack chart. That will be a second phase of this chapter. We'll have a look what do you mean by smack chart and how to draw a smack chart, my dear friend. Okay. So before that guys, let's have a look at the transmission line, a basic problems, what we need to do with, it's very simple. We'll be taking only three problems guys, trust me in examination, you'll be getting this sums among this three chart, three sum, that's it. I'll be taking only three major sum in transmission line of constant of transmission line. So just practice this three sums, it will be more than sufficient for your examination and to clear your concepts. Before starting this sum, trust me, the calculation is very easy. Don't look at the bigger number 10 to minus 6, minus 9, plus 6. Don't get afraid of it. It's very simple, but I'll make it very easy. Even you'll be taught how to use a calculator for solving this type of problems. And last, the most important thing, you need to keep that in mind. You don't need to forget to write the unit of each and every parameter. That is very, very important. So being a moderator, being an examiner, I'll definitely reduce your marks. So your unit has to be there. That is must necessary so let's have a look guys very simple let's start i don't have a transmission line my dear friends i have a question question given as the constant of a transmission line the register is given by this l your inductor is given by 2.2 milli milli that means this will be your 10 to to minus 3 g is your conductance it's given as 0 0.25 to 10 to minus 6 more inverse of resistance so in resistance you have ohms conductance you get more c is your capacitor so that's farads 0 0.005 10 to minus 6 farads per kilometer determine the characteristic impedance the characteristic impedance my dear friends is given by z naught next is your propagation constant your propagation constant my dear friends is given by gamma Next, you have an attenuation constant. The attenuation constant is given by alpha. Next, you have a phase constant. It is given by beta. So I need to find Z0, gamma, alpha, beta at 1 kilohertz. So hertz, that means this is nothing but my frequency. It is given kilo, that means it will be 10 to 3. So, beyond finding this, I'll be finding more two variables. Like if it is given to find lambda, that is nothing but your wavelength. And if it is asked to find the phase velocity, that is nothing but VP. So, we will be also be finding velocity and wavelength as well as the sum. So, let's have a look, guys, step by step how to find all these parameters. Basics as a parameter, just need to remember the basic formulas, just put the values for the same. Okay. I hope you're having a calculator right now because you need a calculator while solving this kind of sums. Okay, sure. So let's go for the sec. Starting for the sum. So let's start with the impedance, my dear friend. My impedance Z is equal to R plus G omega L. Your R is your resistance. L is your inductor. And the formula is omega I, you guys already know it. Omega is nothing but equal to 2 pi L. So let's put the values for R, F, L. So the value for R was 6, F was 1 kilohertz, the value for L was 2.2 to minus 3. So let's simplify. If you observe it carefully, the real part is only 1. When I say imaginary part, any value which is adjacent to J, that is your imaginary value. So the real value is 6, it will be plus J. Simplify this in your calculator, my dear friend. So you get bracket 2 pi into 10 raised to 3 bracket close into 2.2 into 10 raised to minus 3 bracket close. So the value which you get is 13.82. So put the value over here is 13.82. The value which you got is your rectangular form. I need also the polar form. To convert into polar form, so let's convert it. So for that, you need to put your calculator into a complex mode by pressing 2. 
So type the value. The value which you got is six plus thirteen point eight two, and the imaginary sign is after the imaginary term, that is I. So this is the value which you got in rectangle form. Convert into polar form by pressing Shift and plus sign. So you get R in theta. So press equal to. So you get the value for R that is fifteen point zero six. And shift and equal to, you get the value for theta. Over here, you will be seeing an angle over here. Okay, this angle sign teaches you and tells you this value belongs to theta. Okay, again, if you want to see the value for r, again press shift and equal to. So you got the value for r. Okay, so let's write the value for r, my dear friend. This is 15.06 angle. The theta which you got is. 65.53 since the z is your impedance so impedance unit is ohm since it is given as per kilometer so it has been given as ohms per kilometer so that's your value for z that's your impedance so z wasn't being asked in the question the question was to find the characteristic impedance that was z naught to find z naught i need z i need y y is my admittance so let's find the value for y, my dear friends. So for the value for y will be similar to z. Z was given as r plus g omega l. So for y, in spite of r, it will be g. G, in spite of l, it will be c. So put the value of g. Omega is 2 pi f. So put the value of f. C, it is given 0 0.005, 10 to minus 6. Now simplify this value, my dear friends. You have only one real part, so note it down directly. 0 0.25, 10 raised to minus 6, that's your real part. Plus j. Simplify this two bracket to get the value for imaginary part. So, bracket 2 shift 10 pi into 10 raised to 3, bracket close bracket 0 0.005 into 10 raised to minus 6, bracket close. So, the value which you get is. 3.14 into 10 raised to minus 5. It's 3.14 10 raised to minus 5. So value which you got is your rectangular form. I need to convert into polar form. So for converting media into polar form, I need my mode to be in complex. So press mode, press to complex. So your real part is 0 0.25 10 raised to minus 6 bracket close plus bracket. So it is 3.14 into 10 raised to minus 5 bracket close. Since it is imaginary part, so press I. While writing, you need to write J before the imaginary term. In calculator, you write after your imaginary term. So that is not J, it is in terms of I. So don't be confused about it. Okay. After writing it, I need to convert into polar form. So for converting it to polar form, I need to press shift plus sign so you will get r in theta now press equal to the value which you get is your r so for getting theta you have to press shift and equal to you get theta so the r the value which you got is 3.14 10 is to minus 5 angle so value for theta shift and equal to which you got is 89.53 so it is y it is admittance inverse of impedance the unit is more that is given as per kilometer. So after finding Z, that was the impedance. After finding Y, that was the admittance. Now you will be able to find the characteristic impedance. So that's the reason I had to find Z impedance, Y admittance to find out the value for characteristic impedance. The characteristic impedance, my dear friend, it is given as Z naught. So your z0 is equal to under root z upon y. Your z is your admittance, y is your impedance. So put the value of z and y and simplify to get the value for z0. So let's do it, my dear friends. The value for z which you got is 15.06 angle 65.53 divide by the value for y which you got is 3.14. 10 raised to minus 5 angle 89.54. So let's find the value for Z naught. If you have an under root, my dear friend, 
after putting the value for z and y. So now we will be learning how to take the root of this complex form. That is very very important. This is something new about it, which we have already done in couple circuit in DC circuits. So let's revise it once again, guys. Okay. So if you have an under root and you have a polar values, okay. So what you need to do it, you cannot put everything in calculator. If you put everything in calculator, you will be getting a math error, okay. So you have to solve part by part. So let's see what is the solving part. Keep the under root as it is. Since both are in polar form, divide the only the real part, only the real part, not the angle part, only the real part. If we divide the real part as 15.06 divided by bracket 3.14 into 10 raised to minus 5 bracket close. So the value which you get is 4, 7, 9, 6, 1, 7, point 8, 3. Now, the after division of the real part, now you need to subtract the angle, upper angle minus lower angle. So the value will be 65.53 minus 89.54. So the value which you get is minus 24.01. So now I need to get the value for Z0. To get the value for Z0, my dear friends, now you cannot put this value as well in the calculator. You will get a math error. So what is the shortcut, my dear friends? If you have a polar form, I need to take a root. So what you need to do it, the real part you have to take a root and the angle you have to divide by 2. The real part you have to take the root and the angle you have to divide by 2. That is the way a shortcut method in which you can take a root of a polar form. So take the root for real part, root bracket 479617.83 bracket close. So the root which you got is 692.5 the value and the angle that is whichever angle which you got my dear friends you have to divide by 2 so the angle which you got is minus 24.01 it's divided by 2 so value which you got is minus 12.005 so that's the value for z0 which you got after simplification the value from z and y so the value for Z0 is 692.5 angle minus 12.005. The value after getting the value of Z0, put the unit as ohms that's your impedance. Now, after finding the characteristic impedance, my dear friend, that's your first point which you had to do it. Now, let's go for the second type and the second question which has been asked that is your provocation constant. Your provocation constant, my dear friends, is given as gamma. Again, your provocation constant depends on your impedance and your admittance. So after finding the impedance and admittance, you'll be using the formula gamma is equal to under root z into y. For z0, the formula was z upon y. And the provocation constant, the formula is z into y. So that is the difference, my dear friends. So please remember, for z0, z upon y. For gamma, z into y. So please don't interchange the formulas. That You'll make a blunder for it. Okay, so now put the values for Z and Y. The value for Z was 15.06 angle 65.53 into and the value for Y is 3.14 10 raised to minus 5 angle 89.54. So if you have two polar form and multiplication, okay. So what you need to do it, you have to multiply the real part, okay? So multiply the real part, so bracket 15.06, bracket close, bracket again 3.14 into 10 raised to minus 5, bracket close. So value which you get is, after multiplication is 4.72, 10 raised to minus 4. Since both are polar form and multiplication form, you need to add the value. If it would be in division, subtract the angle. Multiplication and the angle. So the angle will be 65.53 plus 89.54. So it will be 155.07. So now, after getting the value for gamma, 
you have an under root and you have one polar form. So what is the procedure? Take the under root of the real part and the angle is divided by the two. So that is the only way where you can get the root of this polar form. Okay. So take the under root of real part under root bracket 4.72 into 10 raised to minus 4 bracket close. The value which you got is 0 0.021 bracket and the angle value is divide by 2. 155.07 divide by 2 you get as 77.53. This is the value which you got as your gamma, your propagation constant is per kilometer. So the value which you got is your in polar form. So to find the value for alpha and beta, I need this value into a rectangular form. So let's convert it into a rectangular form. For converting into a rectangular form, my dear friends, I need to be in complex mode. So the value which I got is 0 0.021 shift and angle. And the value which I got angle is 77.53. So this is my I polar form. I need to convert into rectangular form. To converting into rectangular form my reference, I need to press shift and minus sign. So you'll be getting A plus B I. So press equal to. So that's your real part for the rectangular form. So put that the value. So your gamma will be equal to 4.53 10 raised to minus 3 and shift and equal to this, this value which you got is J 0 0.020. The real part which you got is nothing but your alpha and the imaginary part which you got is nothing but your beta. So this part is known as your attenuation constant and this part is known as your phase constant. To get alpha and beta, that's the reason I had to convert gamma value of polar into rectangular value. Unless until if we don't convert your polar to rectangular, my dear friends, you won't be getting the value for alpha and beta and alpha is nothing but attenuation constant and beta is your phase constant so let's put the value for alpha and beta separately so your alpha will be 4.53 into 10 raised to minus 3 the unit is nepper per kilometer and the beta value is 0 0.20 the unit again when i talk about alpha it is nepper per kilometer. When I talk about beta, that is nothing but radians per kilometer. So it is nothing but radians per kilometer. So after getting the, all the four values, my dear friends, Z0, that is characteristic impedance, gamma, propagation constant, alpha, attenuation constant, beta, phase constant. Now let's find more two values if asked, that is your wavelength and your phase velocity. The wavelength lambda is given as 2 pi upon beta. So put the value. So 2 pi is your constant. The value for beta which you got is 0 0.20. So divide bracket 2 pi bracket close divide 0 0.020. The value which you get of lambda is 314.15. The unit is kilometer because everything is in kilometers which is given to you so after finding the wavelength if it is asked in question that you have to find the phase velocity as well so the concept and the procedure for the phase velocity would be omega upon beta so let's put the value for omega and beta your omega is 2 pi f my dear friends and the frequency value is given to you the frequency is 1 kilohertz, so to 1 into 10 to 3. And the value for beta is given to you, that is only about 0 0.20. So that's divided bracket 2 pi into 10 to 3 divided by 0 0.020. And the value which you get is 314159.26. Again, the value. BP is since everything is kilometer, that is kilometers per second. So that's all the logic, guys, which we have studied in this sum. We learned how to find out your impedance from resistor and inductor. We learned how to find out your admittance from conductance and capacitor. We learned 
how to find out the characteristic impedance that is Z naught from impedance and admittance. We learn how to find propagation constant gamma from admittance and impedance. We learn how to find out alpha and beta from propagation constant where alpha was the real part and the beta was the imaginary part. Where alpha is ten miles attenuation constant and beta is known as a phase constant. After that, we also learn how to find out the wavelength. The wavelength can be given as given as two pi upon beta, that is a phase constant, right? So, what's the value of two pi beta? We also learn how to find out the phase velocity, that is nothing but vp, that was nothing given as omega upon beta. So after putting all the values, all the calculation, please don't forget to write the unit for each and every terms. That is D must. Okay. Let's have one more example, something different, where we need to find some different values. So that will be a thorough practice for this topic. Thank you so much, guys. Signing off.